wrong, Doug. Uh, you're still a master in my mind. <laughs> but whatever the case, uh, I, um, there's only a few people who've gone through all six series. But also at the same time, Doug said that Iyengar had, within the Light on Yoga, mm -hmm. he had that whole six series exemplified in the Light on Yoga. Oh, it's another wonderful book. He mentioned that to Iyengar's credit. Mm -hmm. He didn't divide it up like Iyengar, nor did Krishnamacharya, or Patabi Joyce for that matter, but it's all contained. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing about Iyengar um, is is he really talks about um, this refinement of the postures. You know, uh, Patanjali in this sutra uh, talks about the perfection of the posture, but Iyengar goes deep to the core and he says there's this communication going on with the skin to the muscles, from the muscles to the mind to the heart. Um, or to the spirit, and so this, there's when this uninterrupted communication is going on back and forth, uh, un and uninterrupted, uninter this um, spontaneous uh, dharyana, joy, joy, uh, dhyana uh, happen, uh, and so uh, and you know so this is the samadhi, right? This yeah. is samadhi. This is uh, when that's when that's happening. In the asana practice, you're going into enlightenment within the practice of the asana, which I thought was really, really an important point um, that, that Iyengar outlines. Which goes to show that um, whether it's meditation or asana practice, even if you're just touching that uh, uh, place of awakening or enlightenment or samadhi in relation to yoga sutras, even if you touch it for five seconds or ten seconds or a minute, uh, you get to taste it a little bit, and once you start to really um, let your muscle memory and your mind remember what this sensation, what this state is, the more often you can perhaps visit this place mm. while doing your asana practice or your meditation or concentration. And of course, Patanjali outlines this as dharana is the concentrative point, uh, and then jhana is the uh, absorption within that concentration point. And then samadhi is the joy and the bliss that derives from this, which is what Rich just outlined more systematically. Mm -hmm. And so as you visit this back and forth over and over again, pretty soon you might be able to stay in that state for the whole time, whether you're practicing asana or uh, doing the dishes, so to speak. You know, and it's Chopping carrots. Chopping carrots, you know, <laughs> taking out the garbage, uh, making love. You know, without being so attached to it. Now, uh, these are just small examples, but being in that state means that you're going to uh, um, be very mindful. You're going to create less harm in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be mindful of others, not just people, but mindful of everything. And so, um, uh, this this is such a important uh, sutra. Uh, if we bring it back down to uh, our yoga practice, at least in relation to the yoga studio, mm -hmm. the yoga room where you're teaching and taking uh, your students and practicing yourself through the postures. Now we have, a, um, as auxiliary, although they're not no, no less important, we have a more uh, um, articulation of what this particular 246, this particular sutra um, is steady, comfortable posture. That's what we must assume. But what this um, leads to, once you're at steady comfortable posture is um, uh, so, affected. So going from 46 to Sutra 47. 247. You have the effort loosening or loosening of effort with the first part holding the posture that allows you to loosen your effort. So you're not trying too hard. You're still being in the posture and you're still holding the posture but your sense of effort. The sense of effort. That's important. Oh, I'm trying hard to change it! Or, oh wow, I'm relaxing into the posture. I'm relaxing, effort is still there. And as that's visited more and more and the effort is loosened, perhaps the idea that this is basically always there and you're just joining it because you've realized it within the posture means that that state is always there. Ananta is supposedly a name for a serpent, the endless serpent. And you can say that this endless state is always there. 
it's just covered up by our clashas, obscurations, all of that, obscurations of the body, pains, all of that, and our focus toward those, um, uh, let's say, uh, more common human uh, uh, foibles and qualities that we all have. And uh, as soon as you're able to loosen your effort and move into that state where the endless is constantly in place, you become absorbed in this kind of meditative endlessness, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, when this is uh, brought to bear in your body, do you have anything uh, to say about that, perhaps, to add, Rich? No, no, that, that's, uh, that's exactly what I was going to move right into the next stage, because you go from this stage to this stage, and then down to here, right? Opposite pairs. Opposite pairs, the um, uh, duality. Well. The dual world, uh, which is very important to have in a practical life. Mm -hmm. We don't want to touch something too hot like a fire. As a kid, we, we touch it and we get burnt and we realize, oh, ouch. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a gross example, so to speak, you know, a big example. But opposites, love, hate, um, uh, aversion, and uh, desire. desire, yeah, all of those pairs of opposites. Um, when we can see those pairs of opposites for what they are, are just either revulsion, pushing away, or grasping, I want this. And when we can see those pairs of opposites to not have any impact upon our meditative state or, or, or the state that we are in asana, mm -hmm. and we can start translating that into our off-the-mat life. Mm -hmm. The post-meditation state is a term used by a Tibetan Buddhist, but you can go take that into your uh, uh, non-mat life, non-yoga posture life and start to see the world operating in the same manner and not be as affected by it so you can actually discriminate and choose what you are acting upon in a very mindful manner so um, eventually the opposite pairs will be flattened out or we won't have that mm -hmm. big yeah. big uh, um, aversion or big desire and then we can start to stay in a more mindful middle way state, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you have anything to add to that, perhaps? That's, it. That's good. That's wonderful. All right. That's well said. All right. See you next time. Bye.